No, uh, yeah, Irish people are amazing at fights. Just don't touch their legs or they'll immediately fall over. What are you talking about? Crying. Those are the strongest parts from all the dancing. No, the, the, how come there are n- <laughs> no Irish person has ever even come close to qualifying for the Olympics at wrestling? They're what, dog what shit. about Conor McGregor? Yeah, he kicks people all the time. Yeah, he got fucking brutally demolished by a Dagestani who knew how to wrestle. What so, about Inya? <laughs> Enya has a sick double leg, actually. Enya, Enya, Enya actually went. Yeah, Enya in that castle. She's got some fucking like rune strength, and she went to a draw with Jordan Burroughs. It was actually sick. I don't know how like a forty-five-year-old Irish woman wrestled like a you know college junior in America, but she did. As long as you do it inside sick. a fairy ring, you get the power. I, I really feel like people have been gaslighting me recently by insisting that they like Enya. Enya's sick. Dude, I like him. Uh, it, you, it slaps. People, Consider yourself gaslit. Yeah, your Ocarina rules. flow. Oh, my what God. Music, what bang. music do you bang. like, Matt? You people, are Enya just, slaps. <laughs> you people just exist to fucking torment me what and mu- lie what, in order okay, to upset you, me. You have to tell us what music you like. It's fine. I don't... I just... The, all you those don't pure listen moods. To music. All those pure moods from the early okay. 90s. Uh, you got, here, here's the playlist. Uh, you got some Enya on Awful. there. You've got uh, the Vangelis theme ah! from Chariots of Fire and 1492 Conquest of Paradise going dummy hard, getting you in that mood. That that's What, what op- that mood to kill yourself? No, um, the mood to open up the Marianne mindset, to no. see the orbs. Ah, yeah. shit. You, God, if I have to listen to Enya to see the orbs, then I guess I'm not seeing the orbs. It's not happening. You're just afraid of your third eye. I might be. But, okay, what music do you like, though? I've always wondered this. Uh, you know, like Camp Town Races. That's, <laughs> <laughs> that slaps. Does Stephen Foster? Stephen Foster rips. Prob- really? Problematic, <laughs> though. Matt, he's a problematic <laughs> fave. Yeah. Yeah. Matt is literally the Andrew tweet where he's telling a girl, like, yeah, I've been getting into older stuff like Fairy Jaka. <laughs> <laughs> So, fellas, let's real talk now. Um, day five of the sex strike. I am committed to this. I have not crossed the picket line. You know, I'm, I'm holding strong. I hope all of you guys are. My but, balls are the size of regulation of medicine balls. Okay, on the sex I'm, strike, we've committed to it, but here's the problem. The modern-day Pinkerton agency that is Snapchat, in the middle of the sex strike, they broke out the filter that makes your homie look like a beautiful lady. And they're really they're really pushing me. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to scab. It's getting real hard out here. Looking at there's all, some, there's some times looking at no all idea. your favorite Twitter Twitter homies is just like it's like when Bugs Bunny dressed up as a lady. Yeah, I entered stage today uh, with a engorged, over large phallus <laughs> dragging on on the on the boards of the stage like an Aristophanes character <laughs> from Lysistrata. <laughs> Um, and a bit and a mask that was like comically um, horny. <laughs> well, but being a gay, I was like, "Bring it on! <laughs> Sex strikes, automatic scab." But uh, <laughs> if if anyone is getting too sprung off their hot homies, just if you want to cool off, look at a picture of me, gender swap because I look like grown up honey boo boo. <laughs> I've I've done it several times with different apps. I never look good. I always look terrible. <laughs> I just look awful. I look like Megan McCain if she wasn't rich. <laughs> <laughs> I like mine looks like a sexy Gizano. <laughs> yes, like no, you, no. Felix, Felix has some of the best gender swap pictures. Well, I would, I would have been such a hot woman. Uh, my pussy would have fucking stank, but I would have been a hot woman. <laughs> Because Literally, of how hot you were? Yeah, my pussy would have been like like in a cartoon when a poor person opens his wallet. That's what my pussy would have been like as a woman. <laughs> a fly comes out. Like, like a little fly. Yeah. Out. Yeah. Just open up, just popping my pussy. No, just basic hygiene and his inability or unwillingness to uh, carry it out. No, I have like good place. hygiene as a man, but it's like there's a lot of shit you have to do with a vagina. From what I understand, yes. My yeah. pussy would be like when in the cartoon... Um, the smell of a pie uh, physically <laughs> <laughs> lifts you up off the ground and pulls you, Donald Duck, yeah, usually, yeah. by the nose uh, <laughs> towards the window. So. I think I think if I was a woman, I would be one of the women from the Barstool podcast where they're like, we like to get drunk. Like yeah. the, the one the guy posted the clips of. 
You'd be like a bourbon bitch. Yeah, I would be a bourbon bitch. A and, cool GF. And I'd get like tons of horny replies, but then the rumor mill would start that, yeah, you got flies in my cooter. <laughs> <laughs> and that would be my undoing. <laughs> and as, a man, as a man, if flies come out of your urethra, of your dick, like, you know, it's just like rugged. It's like Brad Pitt rolling out of bed. Bob Dole suffered out of bed. from that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got bed bugs in my pubes. <laughs> I take life chill. I don't take myself too seriously. I'm not one of those metrosexuals who doesn't have lice in his taint. Well, I want. I mean, I want to talk about the sex strike, but you know, I, we're helping you out on the sex strike by Felix talking about his bed bug ridden <laughs> genitals. Yeah. Uh, Felix has been taking the sex strike really hard, but you know, it's it, unfortunately it's landed in the part of the year in his like hibernation cycle. He's not in Pon Far yet, so he's holding strong, probably I feel like, the most out of all of I us. I feel like this is criti- my breeding practices are like criticized a lot. Let me explain something to you. If you buy more than four gaming m- mouses, like a two month period, you can't have sex with anyone. You can't even fucking come close. Uh, <laughs> Why? Because the experience that you're having with the gaming mouses or, or make sex? No, people can like smell a- it on you. Oh. They're like, oh, this guy has gone through four different Logitech gaming mouses. And uh, has compared has compared the weight of it when he tries to hit an ar- like a you know arm aim flick. If um, only there was aim trainer for the human heart. Wish there was aim trainer for sex. I'm always missing that thing. <laughs> Are they co- <laughs> I am landing in the belly button all the time. It is embarrassing. <laughs> Chat is going crazy. <laughs> They're calling me a bot at sex. It sucks. You need um you need like tracer bullets. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I'm going back to fucking on console. At least I had aim assist. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> so, I am, uh, I'm always just like, I'm always just hitting, you know, like the sort of armpit of the knee. I don't even know how I got down there. So uh, Alyssa Milano's sex strike uh, continues. Uh, we will update you as it goes. You know, again, please stay strong. Don't scab. Don't strike break. Yeah. Especially if you're a beautiful lady or one of my Twitter homies who's also a beautiful lady <laughs> <laughs> with the aid of Snapchat. Got to say Virgil's. Virgil's is like pretty hot, actually. Virgil yeah, no, Virgil's is hot. Looks like a fake gamer girl, though. <laughs> oh, totally. <laughs> He's got bangs. She would have Virgil. so many Twitch followers. Yeah, Virgil is like, I would uh, give him like a hundred dollar dono and be like, "You don't have a husband, right?" <laughs> He's just walking by out of frame. Yeah, Lady Virgil would 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 stream like Duck Hunt or something to half a million horny losers. <laughs> the Lady Virgil. <laughs> Her honor has been besmirched. <laughs> girl Branson is like. That's just a catastrophe. <laughs> <laughs> the app won't even erase his beard. That's yeah. how powerfully masculine he is. Well, um, let's uh, let's kick off the show after the uh, sex strike update. Um, very pleased to say uh, that we've got James Adomian, but sitting in for the first time in a while. We, this is the first time we've seen you in the flesh, yeah. sir. Usually, you know, you're uh, you're you're coming to us uh, via you know a phone line on but... tour uh, in my steampunk dirigible <laughs> <laughs> around North America. <laughs> North America is what you say to sound cool. Like you also go to, but it means you just go to Toronto. <laughs> <laughs> so James is uh, you're in the city for a little bit, and uh, yeah. you're kind enough to uh, to drop by the trap. Uh, great to see you. Yeah, again, what day sir. is this? I'm I'm curious. It's mother. Day? It's Mother's Day. Oh, we're on. This yeah. is Mother's Day. It's Mother's Day. Yeah. I don't know if I didn't know if you bent time. Well, we'll try. Back timers. That's a it's some science fiction movie. Back timers. <laughs> they're they're the creatures that move backwards through our timeline. <laughs> the Langoliers. Yeah, they just go through history, just spoiling movies for everyone. <laughs> 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 you get a phone call in like 2012, and it's like Iron Man dies. <laughs> <laughs> the movie Back Timers spoils itself. <laughs> uh no bullshit though matt you showed me this dude, we saw like there was some huge comment on our reddit complaining about spoiling yeah. Avengers endgame yeah they said and it they, was fascist to spoil endgame they said it was like doing this just putting spoilers out there like you're just reveling you know you're it's doing it to be cruel for its own sake it's cruelty for its you might own as sake. well be an ice agent rounding up yeah. undocumented people and they said that yes movie spoilers are fash and you know you it's easy to scoff at that but you may not know that you know, in the 1930s, one of the things that the brown shirts did was go around telling people how M ended. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, I, I can't think of any worse thing you can do to a person than tell them, you know, Thanos, like, yeah, eat somebody into the optim- optimatum gauntlet or whatever. <laughs> that would fucking suck. I'd probably kill myself. <laughs> All right. So, um, 
spoilers are fash, but um, uh, here's no spoiler. Optimus uh, Prime dies. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see the thing where um, Donald Trump uh, just scored an excellent dunk on Pete Buttigieg by uh, comparing him to classic Mad Magazine figurehead Alfred E. Newman? And then Buttigieg responded by being like, mm, I guess that's a, a generational thing. I had to Google that. And I got to say, Bullshit. B- Buttigieg is not that much older than I got a subscription to Mad Magazine when Everybody I was a kid. Everybody knows Mad Magazine. Shut the fuck up, you fucking nerd. I, I, that I, was not a snappy answer I, to I, a stupid <laughs> question. I can't wait for the general between those two. It's going to be explosive. It's going to be so, oh my God, they're just going to be going off on each other. It's going to look like Spy versus Spy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Donald Trump is going to be like, uh, Mayor Pete should be in hee haw. <laughs> and Mayor Pete will just be like, the only thing I'm hee hawing at is your disregard for the Constitution. <laughs> oh, just going off on each other. <laughs> Fucking awesome. I can't Yeehaw! wait. Why well why isn't it here during this trying time? We really could use hee haw. Yeah, hee haw was the first mad TV. That's true. Like kind of. I know who Alfred E. Newman is, obviously. Uh even though I did not have a subscription to Mad, I had a subscription to crack. <laughs> <laughs> so I was more of an alt scenester. I was always more of a Sylvester P. Smitha guy than an Alfred E. Newman guy. I uh, love the idea of a guy who's like, yeah, I'm really into punk zines and mad cracked. <laughs> I don't know. There was just something I think cracked. I don't know. It just feel uh, mad felt a little too establishment for me when I was mm-hmm. a kid. I wanted, mm-hmm. and it's like cracked. It's like it felt more punk. Cracked would make fun of Ren and Stimpy. They would go there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I, people were laughing about how Buttigieg didn't know who Alfred E. Newman was. I also think it's funny that Donald Trump had that in his Rolodex. <laughs> well, yeah, that's true because that would require reading. Which uh, I know that he means does he's not. been no. paying attention t- to comedy <laughs> magazines. Well, no, no. He obviously he doesn't read mag magazine, but we know Trump has always been very. In, you know, in tune with the media, he has a lot of PR people working from over overtime. Like he'd have PR people contact Page Six and be like, "This just in: our wags say that Donald Trump's penis is large and he's very good at sex." And then he, they, he must have had so, made so some angry was, calls to Mad. Yeah, magazine. no, he had his PR people like call, contacting Mad Magazine to just be like, uh, "Your your parody of uh, Donald E. Blump Blumpkin, <laughs> 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 you you must retract or you no, will you face know what? it. That, that's true because there are records of them making fun of him back in the nineties and eighties and stuff. So I'm sure that he was very aware. He like circled it with his big magic marker. It's unfair. The white spy is a loser. He's a dirty <laughs> cop. <laughs> the white spy is friends with Bruce Orr. Everybody knows. Everybody knows the white spy. He's terribly in debt. The failing Mad Magazine. I mean, the I, one thing that no one has ever talked about is that, and I wish someone would ask him, is that he one million percent thinks that Alfred E. Newman is a real person. Like, oh that he God, is yeah. the publisher of Mad Magazine. <laughs> He's like the Graydon Carter of Mad Magazine. I saw Al- Alfred Carter and Alfred E. Newman hugging and kissing outside Waverly Inn. Uh, Alfred I've, E. Newman's heard, o- Oscar party, not hot anymore. <laughs> Pack it in. I've heard that Alfred E. Newman's cream pie restaurant not longer funny. <laughs> Notorious I've, enfant terrible. I've talked to Alfred so- E. Newman. Got into it with Christopher Hitchens. <laughs> <laughs> I've talked to some of the people who are asking some of the supposedly uh, stupid questions. Those are completely fabricated. They're false. <laughs> they made them up to make themselves look good. <laughs> Alfred's a really nasty, insecure guy who has to make up conversations to make himself look good. Because no one wants to come to his awful party at the Stupid Bowl. <laughs> it's called the Super Bowl, Alfred. Learn how to spell. His adult teeth haven't come in. He's he's older than I am, and his teeth haven't come in. <laughs> I think I'm about a month away from retweeting all the Graydon Carter tweets again. Those are the best the tweets best. ever written. They're so good. I did like though, uh, like the 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 Buttigieg brigade uh, did have some choice reactions to Donald Trump calling him Alfred E. Newman, and they were like. Um, some people read Mad Magazine as a kid. Others learned six languages and read Finnegan's Wake. And it's like once again, like has anyone learned how to how to get over on Trump? No, no, obviously not. So Budajeji. Yeah. What if Trump was like that? Finnegan's Wake was the only book he ever read, but he was just like the world's greatest expert at it. <laughs> he just <laughs> out of nowhere. It. Yeah, just wow. out, he's just like the only guy who knows it. Yeah, James. Uh, what do you what do you make of the the Buddhist edge Magnus? Is he is he going is he going anywhere? Um, he's he's got some pull in the gaze. He's got some pull in the in the gay scene. In the yeah yeah in the if GC. Want, yeah, if you want to look, if you want to get laid in in today's America, 
<laughs> you better have a neutral to positive position on Pete Buttigieg. I mean, I mean, there's an incentive. People want to see him be the third gay president. <laughs> uh, James Buchanan. And probably Lincoln. But oh, definitely Buchanan. Back to back? Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. Something happened Wait, um, in the no, mid-1800s. Uh, Matt, I'm sorry. Fourth gay president? I think you're forgetting. Barack Obama. Barack of Obama. Of course. Um, I, I actually don't believe we've ever had a straight president. <laughs> That's my conspiracy. So, like, uh, on Grinder, you have to have, like, you know, Buttigieg neutral. Buttigieg neutral to chaotic good. Uh, that, that actually, yeah. In, in addition to top bottom, versatile, <laughs> the next thing is going to be. <laughs> Where do you stand on Buttigieg? Versatile. Yeah. I'm a Buttigieg switch. I'm a Buttigieg bottom boy. <laughs> um, yeah, great. Buttigieg, fantastic. I mean, it's I'm like I'm like technically happy that you can be a gay or for president, but I had had like a you know how you have like a hypothetical that you're ready for an argument that you never use in your head. Mm -hmm. I had one for years that was like. Well, if a gay ran for president, I wouldn't automatically support him because he was gay. And now it's happening. <laughs> <laughs> You've proven yourself right. I never had to use it because that argument never happened. But then it, now this is happening, and I'm like, okay, well, I'm not supporting this gay just because he's gay. It's happening. It, thanks for bringing it there. I'm glad that the back timers have engineered this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, the other thing that happened this week we didn't get a chance to talk about was... Um, Ben Shapiro destroyed by BBC. Why don't you just say that you're on the left? Uh, is this so hard for you? Why can't you just be honest? <laughs> Mr. Seriously, Shapiro, I, it's a serious question. Mr. Shapiro, if you only knew how ridiculous that statement is, you wouldn't have said it. I, I just really? asked you a question. Yeah, he got his back walls blown out there. Who is that? Ben Shapiro? <laughs> no, who? I know Ben Shapiro. Who's that one BBC guy? His that, name is Andrew Neal. Yeah, well, that's a, the thing. He's, he's a 3,000-year-old Tory. <laughs> yeah. He's the turtle from NeverEnding Story yes. that's like, you can't get there. <laughs> it's over 10,000 miles away. <laughs> <laughs> No, he's like, uh, yeah, he's he's like one of these, uh, you know, British TV interviewing fossils. That, um, yeah, no, he uh, he he destroyed Ben Shapiro just basically by asking him questions. But the thing is, everyone assumed that it was like Ben Shapiro pawned by reality. But like Andrew Neil is like thinks that being gay is a disease and that like global warming is made up along with vaccines like he's just like a weird ancient yeah. Tory lunatic which just goes to show how share how much of a precious little boy Ben is well the thing is like it just the conventions of like British TV news interviews are completely different than American yeah. which is like in America they always want to get you book backed and they never ask a follow up question where it was like in the BBC like they take pride in you know uh, you know making you uncomfortable or just sticking the knife in i've got nothing but time to uh, open up this textually printed copy of your tweet <laughs> <laughs> yeah the best thing is like andrew neil like in the uk is just like psychotic far-right lunatic but like people who people who watch it with no context were like Oh, this epic liberal just pwned Ben Shapiro. <laughs> well, but the way it's like, no, America that, is just an exceptionally right wing country. But that's that's the thing. That's Ben started that because his when he started getting pushback, his only move was, ah, you're actually a liberal, and this is actually a biased interview because that is the strategy: is that you prevent getting any kind of critical uh, pushback in an interview by working the refs by establishing a thing where you say any kind of hostility is proof of your bias. And since every American uh, <laughs> journalist is terrified of being called biased in any way, that keeps them from doing anything that'll make, that'll make it hard for him but, to respond. What's so funny about that is that, that like this Ben Shapiro is like Mr. Too Damn Debate. And like, isn't the entire like convention of a debate is that your opponent is biased against your point of view? Yes, or that is argument will argue against but it. But he only wants to debate, as we've discussed many times, weeping college students. Those are the only people who wants to debate. No one else who has ever offered to debate him has ever been taken up on it, <laughs> uh, other than like sh like dog and pony shows at like Politicon, where it's like just a bunch of media hacks. Otherwise, it's like if you don't have purple hair and you're not already crying when you're talking to him, he doesn't want to debate you. Yeah, ben Shapiro will get thrown off if somebody isn't actively shivering around yeah. him. Uh, the way to defeat uh, Ben Shapiro is to slow down his voice track to normal one-time speed. <laughs> um, he's usually played at 1.5x, and if you just dial him down, if you chop half a click, if you chop and screw Shapiro, it's uh, <laughs> his points become uh, 
instantly assailable. It's like the ch- he's like the chipmunks. If you slow it down, <laughs> you can slow it down and hear how they accomplished um, uh, Ben Shapiro. Yeah, no, he should cut a Christmas album too. <laughs> <laughs> Alvin Simon Shapino. Actually, your argument is false. It's absolutely insane that a chipmunk wouldn't wear pants or a coat, but he's gonna wear a turtleneck. <laughs> Unusually bulky, you know, you're, you're going to tell me he's going to wear it to bed? Like he's going to wear it to bed like a nightshirt. Okay, well, that's an entire separate article of clothing that could stand alone. Yet, he doesn't even have underwear on. He can't even wear basketball shorts. Are you going to tell me because his legs are short? There are plenty of people with short legs who wear pants. We can thing. hardly stand the weight. Please, Christmas, don't be late. <laughs> <laughs> the other funny thing that came out of that um, was... You know, as as you do, you know, you make fun of Ben Shapiro's uh, stupid squeaky voice and his height. But like the backlash to the backlash are people saying that, like, you know, please, let's make fun of Ben Shapiro. But could you do it based on something other than his height, stupid voice or general physical appearance? And it's just like, if you can't make fun of someone based on how they look and sound, <laughs> then what really can you do? What's I don't, the, what yeah, are we what, doing what are here? We doing here, people. Let's just pack it in. It's like, you know, being being short, it's not like, you know, it's not like he was uh, born with dwarfism or something. Being, being That's not a disability or anything. It's just, oh, he's just a wee guy. Yeah. He's a little, little guy. I mean, it wouldn't, it, the shortness wouldn't really matter if he, if he didn't have just such a hall monitor energy. Well, he has short guy energy. Yeah. That's the thing. Ah, like, there ah, are short guys that, that pull it off, you know? Yeah. Like Tom Cruise. Exactly. He's <laughs> Who a has fucking five-star pimp. That's yeah. the energy of an intergalactic di- dictator. Yeah, yeah, he's got big Zen- Zunu en- big Zenu energy. I mean, as a, you know, look, I think, I obviously can't speak for everyone, but, you know, I'm only 6'1". You know, obviously people <laughs> under 6'3 should be murdered. <laughs> wow. I really started, like, like, kind of sub to Napoleon. Yeah. I was significantly below average height myself. Mm-hmm. Is six one. I think it's okay. I mean, I'm just like a hair under six feet and uh, 26 years old as well. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, as all of us as men below average height for a man is six four. And if you're below that, it's probably okay if someone kills you by accident, <laughs> not on purpose, but by accident. And we say it's okay. So there you go. Um, you please make fun of Ben Shapiro all you want, but can you please do it in dry academic language in a peer-reviewed journal? <laughs> and, um, that's uh, probably vetted by academic sources. No, I mean the only good way to make fun of somebody is like a compound swear that would have like just been even unfunny on like fucking Reddit or Game Facts in two thousand five, but sort of make it woke. So you're not making fun of anyone's appearance or anything else. Uh, uh, fuck a, button. Yeah, call him a fuck button. That will own him. That's, everyone loves that. Are so cool. Oh my god, they're fucking sick. It's like, wait, all right, he's gonna call him a fuck. Oh wait, no, there's a waffle in there. <laughs> Where is this guy going? Whoa! Oh my god. Ah, I'm glad I brought my seatbelts to this rift. Riff. Fuck. Riff. <laughs> shit. Cut that. Whoa, Not shit. Chris. You Whoa, you a brought a, a to a god, You brought a seatbelt to a rift fight. Oh. You should bring a seatbelt to a rift if you're gonna fall into it or something. What the fuck did you say to me, you little shit? <laughs> You go through the rift, and then that's when you encounter Enya. Yeah, that's what, that, that's what lays beyond. Um, speaking of another 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 B boy uh, who's in the news, I just I want to talk, let's talk about uh, about Joe Biden again because I gotta say <laughs> we've been talking about him for a while now. You know, he's he's in the race, and it's hard to know what to make of this because. You're looking at the polls now, and it looks like Biden is just romping. He's killing it. Like he's Joe just like Biden. He, He's up by like 45 to 15 against Bernie in South Carolina. He's up by like 15 or 20 in New Hampshire. Yeah. And it's, you know, what are we to make of this? Because, you know, on the one level, it's long way to go before you know, any votes are cast. You could point to like similarly, Matt, you were saying like Jeb. Yeah, Jeb was, was up, leading at this point. He was leading in, in, in similar, yeah. uh, like big, big lead. But at the same time, it's just. It's very easy for me to imagine just Joe Biden just oh, sailing to the Democratic nominee. When you look at the Democratic uh, primary voter base of people who are just always, if if they have an incumbent pre- Republican in a you know five alarm terror and are like, oh my God, what can we do? What can we do? What can we do? And they and all they think is, well, not it's not what I want. It's what does the dumbest person I know want? You and know, then they pick her, well, probably Joe Biden. If you don't read the news, you're about 50. I'm the guy that you'll fall in line for <laughs> second place. <laughs> I like, I mean, I've 
from the get-go, even before he announced it, I think he's going to win the nomination. But to be fair here, like, the polls that they're doing are fucked up. Like, they're literally just people who are, like, registered Democrats who are on their deathbed. Like, the last <laughs> thing they ever hear is, like, a Rasmussen guy being like, who are you going to vote for? So, like, I mean, one of them, they like, literally didn't ask someone, what was the age, like, below, like... Yeah, there was no one under 50. Yeah. But, but like, landline two, calls. Two, you know, di- yeah. two different polls had no one under 50. Yeah. Okay. I, mean, I still think so that's not a real poll. We got to uncuck these polls again. And, like, <laughs> yeah. got to uncuck the polls. You know, don't want to psych you out. You know, like Bernie still got a good shot at it, but again, uh, Biden is probably gonna he's gonna have to be dealt with at some point. And do, uh, do not take that any. Uh, not, <laughs> All right, you guys, not. you heard it here first. Will is gonna fuck Joe Biden. <laughs> I'll, shit, I'll do it. I'll, I'll Hunter Kelly. <laughs> oh look, I tell you, I tell you, Will, if you have that feminine face swap thing on, <laughs> I might just come up behind you and give you a good sniff and say. Whisper in my ear. Interested in being a? You interested in donating one hundred and fifty thousand dollars? <laughs> totally legal. <laughs> I tell you what. If then you come into my office and say, "Joe, I need a favor from you." It's human nature. I'm gonna go for your shoulders. <laughs> I'm gonna whisper something right in your ear. I've uh, sort of keep the show fresh in the coming months. I've decided that I will be supporting Joe Biden. That's good. Yeah. I have several contrarian takes in support of him. Do you guys want to hear him? Yeah, but wait, what's the contrarian corner? Pro Joe Biden. All right. So the touching stuff. Mm-hmm. All right, that's indigenous Irish healing practices. <laughs> that's literally like he's a fucking uh, Irish T.O. That's how Irish if people heal each other. you've got an eye infection, I can come up and lick, lick it with my eye. <laughs> exactly. I can give you an eye lick like, Are, like I'm licking an ice cream. Okay. It's got a pupil. Oh, it's soft serve. Yeah, and it's like, oh, you're supporting like fucking, you know, Tulsi or like Mike Gravel or Bernie because you want like a less interventionist foreign policy. Joe Biden's like scumbag son is literally doing millions of dollars of deals with, with uh, China, so we will never confront them. And so it's actually the most anti interventionist candidate. Whoa. He's the most dovish candidate. Also, because if his son keeps uh, doing deals. Yeah. Contrarian Corner's winning me over on this. <laughs> oh, yeah. No. We just yeah. need Hunter to diversify. He needs to get a company in Iran. Yeah. Mm. He's- Fucking exactly. This Venezuela. Is, he needs to. He needs. We need to have him have vested interests. He needs to have a diversified portfolio yes. in countries that are currently on the State Department hit list. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, What's Joe, his name? Hunter. Hunter Biden. Yeah, oh, that sounds like a scary lawyer. Yeah, because he's a deal hunter. The greatest he's deal hunting. he made was swooping on his dead brother's widow. <laughs> That was, and he left his own wife for her. He did. He's such a pimp. Wait, wait, wait. He was already married? Yeah. yeah. He's a god. He divorced his wife to marry his brother's widow? Yeah. Did they, does he take the Bible that seriously? I don't seriously? know if they're married. Oh, uh, they were uh, dating or something? I think they were in something? a relationship, and I think they broke up now, Just, but I, a lot of people speculate it's just to keep it out of the spotlight. That he that he's with his brother's widow, like it's the fucking Middle Ages. Oh, yeah. everyone likes the best prestige TV show of all time, The Borgias. Well, now it's real. <laughs> now it's real. The fictional characters of the Borgias are now real, and they're the Bidens. Well, as soon as I get in the White House, I'll be posing for a giant painting every two weeks, <laughs> <laughs> wearing a floppy Italian hat, a couple of shoulder robes. I don't know what you get, your shoulder robes, just to let you know I'm coming for those shoulders. <laughs> He's coming on those shows. <laughs> <laughs> but like, you know, uh, we were talking about uh, Biden's, you know, perceived popularity, whether it's a, you know, uh, not as strong as it would. Uh, the, the, the cucked polls would make it make it appear. You sort of get into this 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 commentary that's like not entirely wrong that states that like, you know, Twitter either on like the liberal side or like the left socialist side is basically kind of like an argument among a very small group of like politically uh engaged elites yeah and that like well, the actual democratic voters like don't know or care about any of this shit and they you know they love joe biden or whatever which i may i'm sure is true to a certain extent but like people the, the next step that people take is like oh well actually like people don't really want a more left-wing turn in the democratic party or they or they're really i said on our last show there is no such thing as the center in american yeah. politics and the thing is like it's true they do like biden and they're not like all the things that you and I would regard as like, you know, huge red flags or like would torpedo him because of all of his noxious political beliefs. The thing is, 
if Joe Biden were running on Bernie Sanders' agenda, he would be exact same as he'd be exactly as popular with the Democratic base and voters. Like it, it like the policy is kind of well. Yeah, matter. that's the like, that's the twist. That's the double side of that argument that oh, they don't actually want you know that they're not that engaged with this stuff. It also means that they don't have some sort of inherent bias against it. They are a they are they like a guy who reminds them of the Obama years, and they want to go back to that. And it's like, hey, he's the Obama. And the other big thing is, like I was saying, the fucking elect uh, electability deal. Which is, of course, just amazing that people still talk about with Donald fucking Trump being president. But the last people in America who are going to still buy that electability is like a thing you can even get, come close to uh, determining with any any kind of ab, uh, accuracy are going to be Democratic primary voters. The electability thing is so outrageous that I'm just completely numb to it now. Yeah, because the other thing is you can't argue against it because, like I said, it's it, there is no basis to it. It's all just a gut feeling. It's just like my gut says that that the American people are you know uh, dumber than me because that's always the assumption of electoral people thinking people thinking electorally is well I might want X Y or Z but what about someone the dumbest person I know what do they want and so that's dumber than me they're more cautious than me they're more reactionary than I am because it's a well known fact that everybody from Democrats to Republicans thinks that the American people are more right wing than they are even across the board. Uh, and so they think, well, what's something that'll be safe? And it's like, hey, former vice president, the popular presidential administration who doesn't rock the boat. Why not him? But yeah, like if Biden was came out strongly to support Medicare for all, he'd probably be more popular. You know, like it's like the, it's like the policy. Well, I see that. Kinda, I don't know about that. Because, really? Well, the thing is, is that it all it all depends on where does his polling position come from? And if it has nothing to do with issues, if it is just name recognition and this idea of electability, then his policy positions are beside the point. Or would you yes. agree that it certainly wouldn't hurt him, right? It like wouldn't the same, no, it the would, same people would support him as they do now. Presumably, yes. It like wouldn't the, hurt him, but I don't think it would necessarily help Okay. Him. Well, we ran the numbers. We'd lose $80,000 an hour in our donations. <laughs> so that's why I don't do it. Well, Biden uh, was asked about this the other day, and his answer for why he doesn't support Medicare for all is because it will let employers <laughs> off the hook awesome. for, for paying for health care. Yeah. And he's like, nice why, angle. why let them off the hook? It's you know? very like, smart. He's yeah. like, all right, I got to appear like I'm not just in the pocket of, of insurance companies and the medical lobby. So what is a populist sounding way I could oppose Medicare for all? Well, don't you love sticking it to your boss by having him pay for a portion of your health care? And which means you're basically a serf to him and you can't leave the job without losing the health care. And also he can switch the health care every year at his whim for a cheaper plan that covers less. Wasn't that like a thing when they were like uh, during the like introduction of the ACA, they're like, oh, we're not punishing employers. And now like the only way they can clutch on yeah. this piece it's of like, shit we're is like, spanking you fucking little... hate employers, right? <laughs> we're spanking <laughs> their bottoms till they're yeah. bright ruby red. Yeah, and it just, it does show how old he is because he just, he couldn't think fast enough. It was just muddled in that clip. What do you say to calls for some sort of universal health care? or something like Medicare for all from some of the other people running well, in the Democratic I, look, primary. Well, I, look, I, I think they're, they're well-intended. I think they mean it. It's, and it's, it's not, I'm not, but here's the deal. Um, right now, you have 60, you have this overwhelming number of employers who are paying into the health care plan. Why let them off the hook? All of a sudden, they don't have to pay anything? What happens then to this whole thing about profit and the rest? I mean, it is, should be part of the compensation if you have it. Like, that's what he thinks people will rally against. Like, that's what he calls companies or small businesses or any business, just employers. Like, I guess that's technically correct. But it sounds like he started writing his answer in German and then translated <laughs> it through halfway. And uh, he also said this week that we need to find the middle ground on climate change. Yeah. Which is even more terrifying than the employers thing. Cause... The middle ground. Only the middle of the country will be left. Finally. <laughs> middle ground. Middle ground. We're not going to lose all of Florida. We'll get rid of Miami and uh, South Florida. Everglades down there. But we'll still have Tampa. No, I mean, yeah, what's the, what the fuck is so thing? good about the Everglades? Just a bunch of alligators and shit. Look, it's a swamp. It'll be more of a swamp. They can figure it out. <laughs> how much, how much better thing? would... I mean, Orlando already the happiest place on Earth. <laughs> how much happier if it was on the water? If you had beachfront property right water there next front, to Disney World. Orlando to Tampa. I would love to see Florida guys, like, they don't have cars anymore, and they're just fighting over, like... Who stole their manatee that they ride to work? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, know, Jerry, Jerry Dunk took my fucking dolphin. <laughs> I had three payments left. <laughs> fucking pussy, dude. I'm gonna beat your ass. 
It's just like Aquaman, but everyone is wearing a wife beater. Yeah. That's Aquaman. That's the new Aquaman. That's literally just <laughs> how we make Momoa no. Aquaman real. Well, no. Yeah, exactly. But he was the only one in the wife beater. I'm saying That's everyone. true. They were all wearing suits. They were all wearing their dumb uh under underwater man outfit what if like florida what people could, what, what if florida people could just like they could walk underwater and breathe underwater and speak and like we no one ever knew and it just sinks and they just create like atlantis is real but it is florida <laughs> just like fucking miami and tampa and they're like yeah we've always been able to do this we just never wanted to <laughs> you have to like get up early it sucks i'm just imagining uh i'm almost positive at some point in his life Trump has wanted to call manatees because they got in the way of a golf course or some marina that he was invested in. <laughs> there, yeah. Like, do you think it's like the tact he took with uh, windmills? He's just yeah. mad that they kill like other species of yeah. fish or something. Uh, no, he 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 re- he's he created a boat that's basically like a like a underwater lawnmower that just <laughs> goes over manatees' habitats it's and just powered, chops them up. It's yeah, powered by killing manatees. <laughs> yeah. So that's green. That's green energy. I got. I do got to say, like the Biden middle ground for we do kind of got to get rid of New York and California. Like honestly, <laughs> like we've had our time with this experiment and it's really not working out. And this would turn Ohio into the new New York. Which give them a shot. They've earned it. How many presidents have come from Ohio? With, a lot. Um, with uh, Planet Express and uh, Bender and all those characters. <laughs> yeah. No. Look, it's time. It's done. California, dog shit. Seattle, they're not. They don't make good planes anymore. Portland, are you honestly going to miss that? New England, nope. <laughs> Get rid of it. It's crap. I can't wait till Columbus is the new New York, and then you get to live there and complain about everybody being a SSRI addicted media person. Well, you know, it's just going to change. Well, no, it's going to be Opana then. Okay. The Ohio guys will just become the new media class. Yeah, new by me. <laughs> new by me. My personal experience seeing the adventures on my couch. <laughs> uh, this is this is a first person. There's cat person, but it's just about two friends constantly stealing headphones from each other. Beats person. <laughs> the the Biden middle ground electability strategy is like interestingly depressing because he could win. I could see it. It's like a coin flip. It, it, I could see yeah. him. I could see him barely winning or barely losing to Donald oh, Trump. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah because yeah. the electability thing could totally backfire because it's not a good the strategy as far as marketing is no. concerned. Well, that's but like also a- it could work, and then we're just kind of like sh- like sh- children of menning forward. Yeah, or mm-hmm. it's like, oh, maybe it's not the maybe it's, we don't all light on fire, but it's just a slow thud. <laughs> you just wake up one day and you find out that baby Diego died and you're like fuck <laughs> I this can't sucks go I can't go into work <laughs> <laughs> pull my finger yeah I know it's uh it's yeah no Biden will get to, uh, f- he'll get impeached within two years after like uh some terror attack or something and then we'll get Tom Cotton or something in there and then uh, then we won't have to worry about elections anymore and I say thank fucking god yeah no, I, w- I wonder yeah. if if Biden or any Democrat becomes president if Republicans will be like we shouldn't use impeachment as just like a political, a cheap political tool. <laughs> if it even is somewhat implied that they've, you know, I don't know, ignored a subpoena or yeah. obstructed justice or something like that. Yeah. Biden, they probably won't. Yeah. Biden is going to get impeached within a month because he like kissed Shinzo Abe on the forehead. <laughs> <laughs> and embarrassed America. <laughs> We're, in the future, impeachment will just be a formal process that is automatically begun as soon as the results are certified. <laughs> yeah. Just to keep everyone honest. Yeah. Yeah. I just, I, yeah. It's not even going to be Tom Cotton. It'll just like every other year Donald Trump will be president. <laughs> and I love that idea. That sounds good to me. It kind of has to be, doesn't it? Because I just, I try to close my eyes and imagine a, pres- a de- Republican presidency that is not Trump. And, like, how are they going to get hard for it? How are the Republican voters going to get hard for a regular politician ever again? A guy who speaks in measured tones and uses... Uh, and uses After a war? Uh, measured tones. But just, like, uses uh, euphemisms and stuff and, like, doesn't just directly say, we're going to go bing, bang, bang, boom. Right. Somebody who's like, we represent a yeah. future that is shining. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that- like, how are you going to get hard for that after, after fucking Trump? Yeah, all those Republicans are too pussy to say how they really feel about Anna Wintour, not Trump. <laughs> but no, I mean, it is it is true, though. Like Tom Cotton will literally do anything to anybody to get there. But he doesn't like 
He doesn't like sell it as well as nobody. Trump. But no has he done getting... a duel yet? Tom <laughs> in the Capitol. Nobody has ever sold it like Trump has. He did do a duel, but it was with um, an Iraqi teenager who wasn't aware it was a duel. <laughs> he took 10 paces and fired. It's called a surprise duel. It's a legitimate competition. Uh, the Iraqi, he, he did have a second, but it was his parents. <laughs> I mean, honestly, Tom, Tom Cotton, Tom Cotton, like, probably really didn't do anything overseas. He just sort of, like, stood around. They made him give him a medal. Him and Mayor Pete had, like, the same deployment, but Mayor Pete was like, I am not going to petition for a medal. That would be dishonest. Uh, and yeah, Tom, you're right. It won't be. Tom, Tom, Tom Cotton did, like, the coolest way to steal valor, which is the way Lyndon Johnson did, which is just, like, writing a letter to a general and being like, yeah, actually, this isn't written down anywhere. No one remembers it, but I did some more hero shit. <laughs> He's like, give me a medal, please. Wait, what did, what did Lyndon Johnson do? He, he, like, he, like, lied about his heroics on, <laughs> on, a pl- on like, a... Where was he deployed in World War II? The he Pacific. Wasn't. Well, he wasn't. He didn't... He never... He didn't joined the military he didn't leave the he stayed in congress unlike nixon or he anything like he, he tried to kill jfk in the pacific <laughs> <laughs> he said that he said he tried to attack the pt, PT boat, boat yeah. <laughs> that was also lyndon johnson yeah he was on a special mission for the oss uh, hold, i'm gonna look this up no he went to, he went to the pacific on like a inspection tour and he got a seat on a re- reconnaissance flight and he just Sat in the he just sat in shotgun on a reconnaissance flight, but then afterwards he petitioned for a medal on the ground that they took fire and that he heroically like you know sat the, there yeah <laughs> that he heroically sat there well what which was all made up but he did get it he got the he got the no uh, yeah and that's like got the medal that's the cool way to do it that is the cool way and Mayor do. Pete not courageous enough to do it not courageous enough to lie can I say that it's everyone knows Mayor Pete isn't really running for there's no, twenty five candidates. There's, well, how, I'm, I'm curious how many of them are really running for president because the vast majority of them are running for vice president or less. Yeah, maybe. Some oh, like, of them uh, are just dude, running for a book like New York Times. Bill top. de Blasio? What is he running? Like, he, <laughs> dude, he's running to be like assistant undersecretary for education. He's running for president to get reelected as mayor of New York. <laughs> well, the thing yeah. is, he can't because. Oh, no, yeah. Yeah, because he's term limited now and they got rid of the exemption for Bloomberg. So If he, he runs for president, maybe there'll be momentum to reverse it. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> yeah, no, people I, love him here. From everything I've read about de Blasio, he actually is the only one in a America who thinks he's running for president because everyone in his life has sat him down and said, you are an insane person. Do not do this. And they did it anyway. And so I think he really thinks he's going to win. Everyone else, though, I'd say 20 out of these candidates now are, yeah, book deal, some post in the administration, uh, uh, be, a, be a TV talking head, something like that. Beto thinks he can win, but would also be happy being vice president. But I don't think he'll get either Beto, one. Yeah, Beto is just like, it's basically like study abroad for him. Yeah, no, that's yeah. the thing. I don't even think Beto cares about winning anything. I just think he likes being in a room with people who like him. Yeah, it's just sexy to be with like the Des Moines Democratic Moms Club or yeah. whatever. He just gets the energy. He feels yeah. the energy. He's a punk rocker. He Mayor feels Pete, the energy what are, what are, It's just what? like, we just like, gotta like us. It's just like, <laughs> It's like we are the ones that can just like, just plurally like we. He's so he's so Gen X because it's gonna it's already just completely fizzling out. He probably won't make it till next year, but after he's gonna be like that was an awesome experience. I learned so much. Gen Xers love completely just eating shit at something and being like, "Thank you for an awesome time." Yeah, thank you, you for teaching me about myself. You don't need to vote for Beto O'Rourke under any circumstances. Just go see Collective Soul. <laughs> <laughs> on, they're on the road now this summer. Go see them, and that should scratch that itch for you. Yeah, go to I, a county fair. I don't know. Like, you John, can see them both, maybe, if you go to the right time. <laughs> <laughs> He's eating a corn dog, and they're playing the. John, John, the world Hickenlooper, I know. John Hickenlooper isn't even running for. He's running for, you know, like emperor of the underworld or yeah. something like this is just a stepping stone thing yeah. to get his no, name H- out Hickenlooper is running to be the fucking captain of uh of the fucking oil uh tanker from water world yeah. <laughs> uh it's astounding that more third and fourth party people haven't announced because trump should really have given the green right light to everybody to try which yes. makes me amazed that why hasn't Jesse Ventura run? I think because <laughs> oh, seriously, he, he's like the model for Trump before anyone, look, before I'm, Schwarzenegger or anything. I'm taking my time. <laughs> I'm actually I've become a common law citizen of Mexico because I've spent <laughs> more than six months a year down here. So I've got to get the paperwork in order. <laughs> I've got a League of Nations passport. 
I, <laughs> I can't get it renewed unless I go to the Canary Islands. <laughs> <laughs> look, I look, I might run for president and you wouldn't even know about it. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be a camouflage campaign. <laughs> oh man, we gotta start Ventura Pack right now. Seriously, well, why not him? He was a problem solver before any of this. Look, yeah. look, I look, I disagree with the left on a few minor issues that I get really bellicose about. <laughs> but ultimately, what you get out of it is a light rail train between St. Paul and Minneapolis. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Ventura only managed to defeat Chris Kyle in yes. court of law. Uh, he used to be in the Reform Party with Donald Trump. That's true. You know, what if only people who are in the Reform Party win from now on? Pat Buchanan. It's Pat Buchanan after Jesse Ventura. Ross Perot's still alive. Cynthia McKinney, right? I think so. Fuck it. Yeah. Reform Ross Perot party. is still alive? I believe yeah, so. Yeah, he is. Really? He is 100%. Ross Perot is still alive. <laughs> <laughs> I play online chess with him. <laughs> <laughs> he he plays by the book. <laughs> he plays a very good, predictable <laughs> his, he, opening moves, middle game, end game. <laughs> Think about like the Ventura White House would be so fucking cool. There'd be all this weird shit all over. The, there'd be like a Mijong thing on the Resolute desk. Yeah, I can't even imagine what kind of weird shit he's into. It's probably fucking sick. Well, I'll tell you exactly what we <laughs> we're gonna put turnbuckles up on all four corners of the White House lawn. <laughs> It'll be a giant ring where democracy, democracy. It's gonna be it's gonna be a royal rumble. It would, dude. Imagine the president is still going to court with Chris Kyle's widow. <laughs> so sick. I'll be in, look. I'm serving. I'm serving papers and or being served. <laughs> Every almost every moment of the day. Do you remember the part? You guys watch Jesse Ventura conspiracy. Yeah, we've talked about this with James. This is our first episode of James. We talked about that. Remember when he went to LaGuardia and he's like, "Let me see the 9/11 stuff," and they're like, "No," and he's like, "I was a governor." (laughs) They have to let him see it now. That's what he should run on. He should run on getting to the bottom of it. Yeah, I'm running for president of (laughs) 9/11. He should run. Twenty years when I take office. Trust me, you want me to what blow if, the what, doors open. He's, okay, still, he's still doing, he brings back conspiracy theory as president. He goes to LaGuardia again. He's like, I'm the president. <laughs> they're like, no. He goes, no, to, what the fuck, dude? He goes to he goes to Area 51, knocks right on the front door. <laughs> An- another. I looked up the address. Area, it was somewhere between Area 50 and Area 53. Uh I didn't Trump promise that he would let people know about UFOs and the Kennedy assassination or if I did I just imagine that he dangled something about uh, uh, declassifying JFK documents, which they did, but they were going to do it anyway. And he just took credit for it. Uh, but the hilariously, they kicked it down the road a little bit. Yeah. Well, yeah. They, they released some and then they kept some the more. C- the, what was apparently the CIA gets to go. We need six more months. Yeah. Whenever no, they feel it's like, like it. with Disney and the fucking uh, the copyright for Mickey Mouse. They just get to keep pushing <laughs> yeah. it down the road forever. Um, Matt, you'll remember this. What is the what is the date that Kevin Costner, aka Jim Garrison, says at the end of JFK? He's like, "I'm hoping my son eats his vegetables yeah. and stays strong." I think so it's in the thirties, two thousand thirty, or in something the like that. Thirties, yes. Okay, fingers crossed. Yeah. All right, uh, crossing off my suicide in twenty twenty three off the <laughs> calendar. I was gonna say, I mean, this is a, a perfect time for Jesse to hop in the race because I think like a couple weeks First ago. First of all, I'm not gonna hop in. <laughs> <laughs> but gonna no, be a jaunt. It'll be a high jump. But like a couple of weeks ago, wasn't there like an actual news story about how Navy pilots have like gotten the government to start looking into UFOs because they just keep fucking yeah. seeing them? No, there's been a steady stream of very like uh, shock stories that in any other era would be much more resonant. I know, like, like, oh, the, in the 90s, people would have been shitting their pants if the stuff that's been released just in the past couple of years. At the height of out. the X Files, right? Yeah. Okay, so like Navy pilots are like, no, literally, like we keep seeing. UFOs that like you and know. the New York Times has this video, these cockfight videos of these little cockfight these little videos. Cockfight <laughs> videos, yeah, they're fighting cocks. The Soulsburgers the, have a cockfighting ring. That's why the F thirty three keeps crash. The F thirty five keeps crashing because I keep fucking cockfighting. Uh, cockfighting the, uh, is not problematic if you give them little gloves, <laughs> <laughs> and if or if you can teach them to play little avian characters it would and be- stick to their kayfabe. Imagine. <laughs> Imagine, okay, so Halo, like the events of Halo take place, like there is a covenant, but the presidents we have during it are Donald Trump and Joe Biden. 
that's so fucked. <laughs> they're in charge of the master chief of the uh, Spartan program. Spartan program. They're negotiating with the covenant. Like Donald Trump, Donald Trump is going to talk to the prophet of mercy. He may actually, he may actually get it done. He may prevent the human or the UNSC covenant war. If I get in there, it's going to be first person shooter immediately. <laughs> the right. president of the United States first all. No, this is Biden is the only dove on the covenant because his son has a deal in high charity <laughs> in the covenant holy city of high charity building the feeding tube system for the grunts. There are so many candidates running for president that should not be running that the news comes out every two weeks where you're like, why the fuck? Somebody's just like, I'm the you, you can't even name an office now without it being like there already is one. I'm the city councilman in, in Phoenix, Arizona. And then it's almost like a zombie movie where you think these characters are like, these are sane people. These aren't running for president. And then they get like bit and they're like, I'm running for president now. <laughs> and a ton of them are people who p could be uh, in competitive Senate races uh, against Republicans. And instead, those that reduces the likelihood that those seats are going to flip, which means that this all is completely fucking academic because the Senate will just prevent any Democratic president from accomplishing anything. Uh, real quick though, before we move on, I, I I do want to touch on more of the Jesse Ventura like X Files shit because okay, Navy pilots keep seeing fucking UFOs again in the nineties. This would have been a bigger story. Yeah. Also, there's that like cigar shaped interstellar object that like yes. forms to like no known like they think it shows element. And then there was another thing. I swear to God, where was another interstellar object like ua, in our ua mama, ua mumu. <laughs> Yeah, that's it. Yeah. An interstellar object in our solar system that just like was recorded just changing directions. Yes. Amagama. <laughs> a big Floyd album. Yeah, no, that's that's a different one. But yeah, that too. Just it just sh sh it, it wasn't an it looked like it could have been an orbit and then it just went boop. And all those, whoa, whoa, whoa. When was this? Recently. It, but it's not the same as Amagama? I don't think I gotta so. See what it, I, I remember how to pronounce it. And then there's the the cockpit videos of these objects that they're following that just zip off the screen completely off of whatever trajectory they were on. And then it came out that Harry Reid had funneled millions of dollars to investigate this uh, paranormal shit going on at this he ranch it, cause he's, yeah. in Utah, the Skinwalker Ranch, that has been like a place where they, for the whole 90s, they were seeing a ton of insane UFO activity. <clears throat> and the classic Jesse Ventura line from the X-Files, even your own president, Jimmy Carter. Even your own president <laughs> saw it. <laughs> why, like, do you think, why do you think he was shocked? <laughs> Into a malaise. <laughs> it, 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 the malaise was a mayonnaise that was coated over this country from another planet. Uh, yeah, UFOs again. Like it sucks because they're coming back in a major way, but no one gives a shit. Yeah. Like UFO obsession and conspiracy theories. That was like such a '90s phenomenon yeah, yeah. of this kind of post Cold War. Uh, like we needed something to communicate the kind of like weird feeling that existed in America and the anxiety, the anxiety, anxiety like, of frontiers closing in. Yeah. And like, Oh, like, Mua. and it was the rendezvous with Rama. Spaceship yeah, exactly. From Arthur C. Clarke, where it came through our solar system and then sped up as it left the sun. And it, but it, it was not, it was not a comet. It was from another part of that. It was not from any known place in the sky. You want to know the reason this isn't a bigger story. I can't worry about an unidentified flying object. When I'm worried about an unqualified freaking orange. <laughs> this is the resistance cast. Are you this, the unqualified orange? Yeah. Wow. That's, a, that's, a, a, that's, really, um, that's really piercing satire resistance. Hey guys, man. one retweet equals one dollar for Pete Budaj. Let's go. Okay. So speaking of someone with, she doesn't. I don't think she's ever written a column about UFOs, but she definitely probably believes in them. She and, has communicated with and them. angels. How can you not at this point? Yeah, I mean both. I, I was talking about Matt before this. I don't know if we've ever done her for a reading series. We have Peggy Noonan. Yeah, we did her like in the first like hundred episodes. Oh, okay, yeah. so this is this is a way callback. Peggy Noonan. Peggy Noonan is a reading series I have for you guys today. Uh, Peggy, yeah, she was like the proto uh, Megan McArdle. So. Paying tribute to yes, the original, just an infuriating uh, toffee head, pudding head. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this is uh, her column in the Wall Street Journal: "The Missing Order in American Politics." Subhead: I grow wistful as I watch congressional chaos while reading Kissinger's forthcoming oral history. That's just a book about all the women he's uh, <laughs> pleasured. 
you it, you put you put two fingers in and above the G spot <laughs> and create triple digit orgasms. No shit, Harry Gopal. My neck fold, my back crack. <laughs> Lick my intervention and my back. Have you ever seen a German boy dance like this, Lou Holtz? <laughs> So uh, this is yeah Peggy Noonan uh, writing in the Wall Street Journal. Um, I am watching Washington and thinking this. We have reached a new crisis point in Donald Trump versus the Democrats. They are speaking of contempt citations, subpoenas, executive privilege, hearings. It's a daily barrage. The Democrats are inching closer to impeachment, at least rhetorically, perhaps actually. We'll see how Speaker Nancy Pelosi can dance right up to the edge to appease some in her caucus and not over it. But there is such a thing as context, as the Democrats seem to be ignoring. This is a country divided. Uh, I want to raise one objection. The Daily Barrage is my incredibly shitty online satire magazine that has has, uh, articles you can read, such as Fox News issues correction for telling the truth. (laughs) So that's strike one. Daily Barrage. (laughs) It sounds violent, or at least rough. Well, it's a barrage of laughs. It also make you think. Laugh barrage. Oh, that makes you think. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There's oh, wow. really good. Because sh- so much stuff. Because I mean, so many people. I mean, on the left are afraid of thought. Yeah, no, we have really good shit in there. Like, uh, there's an article about a congressman getting impeached for passing a damn bill for once. <laughs> <laughs> Daily barrage is fucking good ass shit. We have a hundred billion dollars in angel investment uh, from China. <laughs> uh. So Peggy says uh, the context that Democrats are ignoring is that it's a, the country's divided, unlike at previous points in American history. Uh, so she says, Here, here's the sleight of hand. She goes, almost half the country is for Mr. Trump, truly, madly, deeply. That's not true. That's not true at all. <laughs> it's literally not true. It's like it's like fucking at, guy. At, one fourth. At one fourth. Mo- of the at most, thirty percent of the country. Well, they all do that though. They yeah. always take polls of voters and say this is the entire population every time right because all, they're the only ones that matter all polls should all polls should take into account the 120 million yeah people who no longer believe in the process yeah or I, they should be like if an election like if if more people in america don't vote than vote in a presidential election like there should be no president for some, four years some countries have that you I, have I, to you have to have 50 percent uh, you have to have some minimum quorum of, of, of participation in order for the accounts, the, like the uh, results to count. That would be actually useful if there if there was just four if there years was some sort of incentive with no to executive have a vote. branch exactly, and then as opposed to now where there's uh, nothing but disincentives on purpose so that they could keep just on autopilot with this tiny this, like hyper uh, partisan group of uh, angry middle class old people. So like it is a absolute rump minority of this country that is in Peggy Newton's words truly madly deeply in love with Donald Trump and then uh, she also says half is against him unequivocally unchangeably there is no resolving this or rather to the extent it can be resolved it will be resolved at the ballot box. The presidential election is 18 months from now on November 3rd 2020. I'd like to think that that's not actually the election date and she's trying to like suppress Democratic voter turnout. <laughs> but, you know, this is the pages of the Wall Street Journal. So thanks for reminding us on Election Day is Peggy. Uh, she says, until then, people are where they are and hold the views they hold and don't push them too hard. Again, who are you talking what? to? Don't here? push me. Like, who are you? I'm close to the edge. That sounds like something that could be a warning at, for a ride at Disneyland. <laughs> people are people. Don't push anyone too hard. <laughs> Keep your hands inside the ride. <laughs> Peggy, Peggy Noonan, she's at a turnstile show in the pit. It's like, <laughs> like I like to have a good time. But don't fucking push me. I'm the queen of this pit. Democrats unveil charges and accusations. The president is a liar. He's a tax dodger, an obstructor of justice. But in a way, Mr. Trump's supporters accounted for all this before they elected him. They are not shocked. They didn't hire him to be a good man. Their politics are post-heroic. They sometimes tell reporters he's a man of high character, but mostly to drive the reporters crazy. I think actually, like, Peggy is actually right. She's actually not yeah, wrong no, that's about all correct, that. Like, I, that, think. that is, I, I think, think that's all correct. I think they are. There's a certain element of trolling the media yeah. when they try to ask these sort of They don't give a shit gotcha about any of these things. About, you know, oh, how could a Christian vote for a man who's... Because, oh, because politics have been set up and the media had been monitoring and, and trying to explain politics along the lines of, well, these voters, these conservative voters 
have XYZ values that they hold very deeply. And now they're finding out, yeah, no, we were full of shit the whole time, and they just can't process it. And he says, um, you believe that shit, you fucking dumbass? Well, she says, on the other hand, they sincerely believe he has high political character in that he pursues the issues he campaigned on. Again, that's that's true to the extent that he is filling the judiciary with um, mo- the, the Mothman prophecy. <laughs> Just all Mothmen in the federal <laughs> judiciary uh, and <laughs> made the tax cut. But, like, he campaigned on a ton of shit that he's immediately forgotten about. Well, yeah, and he has. But the thing is, is that they don't really care about any of that stuff. No, they care about the stuff that he has been talking about, which is immigration and, and owning libs and shit like that. So he goes, uh, supporters give him high marks for not looking down on them as they believe most members of the media who are always trying to understand them do. Which, again, I think that's true, but like nobody looks down on his voters more than Donald Trump himself, personally. Of course, himself, but they love, they love being spit on. They're little piglets. They love it. They love that he has contempt for them because they think, he, they think they deserve it from him. What they don't like about these media elites looking down on them is they think, you don't deserve to look down on me, you fucking uh, needle nose. Trump, on the other hand why dick uh, donald he absolutely should be looking down upon all of us on his golden fucking throne and pissing into our mouths I'm, i can make you laugh <laughs> i can make you laugh as i really put you down yeah he's like don rickles they love it yeah, well <laughs> there he says they're if at, he, if he personally he... insulted every person in the front row at a trump rally they would all love it i would love he it. should do a rickles show. he should do a rickles show sit down he should, he should do a um, wally george show yeah just go to town on them. They love it. Their attitude is, don't try to understand me like you're the anthropologist and we're the savages. I'm an American. What are you? They factor the cultural animosity in. When they jeer the press. Is that a real quote or she made that up as an example quote? I think it's, it's an a example. Quote, yeah, yeah, it's like she's ventriloquizing their point of view. Uh, Which is, of course, rich coming from her. Yeah. I mean. When they jeer the press during rallies at the president's direction, they don't really mean it. Okay. <laughs> and when they post... Um, Facebook screeds that is just copy and pasted from the day of the rope from the Turner Diaries. <laughs> yeah. They're trolling. They yeah. don't really mean it. They're just having fun. They're, well, as Peggy's next sentence is, they're having fun and talking back. It's like, you know, James, like at a comedy club when people talk back to the comedian that they're having fun. They're getting in on the act. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's just it's heck- heckling. That's part of the process. <laughs> they're having fun. They'd be happy if their kids became reporters, an affluent profession, and half of them are famous. I dispute that. <laughs> I don't think they want their kids to become Jim Acosta or Anderson Cooper. I mean, if the alternative is like Carney, then maybe yes. <laughs> Carney makes <laughs> like Basement Gamer. I mean, car- I'd probably have them be Jim Acosta. Than uh, that. I don't know. I mean, like after the water wars, you'd much rather be a Carney than Jim Acosta. Carney's at least have talents. The president doesn't really hate the press either. He wants their love and admiration. You don't need the admiration of people you truly disdain. Trump supporters are now looking around and thinking, things are looking up. The economy is gangbusters. Everyone can get a job. Good people are on the courts. I always, when she writes things, or if I see her on TV, it always sounds to me like Peggy Noonan is at her vacation home looking out over like a long expanse where there's water at the edge of it and from that vantage point is talking about the country yeah i mean how many of these kids not just noonan but like really most of them are just like them imagining what people would say yeah well this that's is such I mean, dog shit well, that's man. the entireness of being just a columnist is fucking, just tr- making up a point of view and ascribing it to millions of people just every, fucking get rid of opinion columns which is what honestly we do too, so put it like rerun like an old comic strip from the 50s where there are no jokes and it's just about like a guy doing his job like jim thorpe or something like <laughs> fuck this shit this shit fucking sucks it is the Who most useless like sort this? of thing because even if it's true or not how are you ever gonna fucking know there's no way to test any of this shit like she's just she's just fucking riffing matt everyone can get a job now yeah well, I mean, she's saying that, like, these people are saying it, but also, like, who gives a shit? The only people that should have opinion columns are, like, interesting freaks. It should be, like, Bob Avakian, David Dees, Martin Noakes. Steven like, Seagal. Steven Seagal. Like, it should just all be people who are completely insane. Like, Soldier Boy should be an opinion columnist, and she should write articles that are like, yeah, Drake, Rihanna, they all ripped me off. Like, it's more valuable than this fucking dog shit. There, it's like she's just like the most well known one, but everyone does it. The fucking food guy from the New York Times, Bruni, from Bruni Thomas Friedman, Paul Krugman, for that matter. Like, literally, this is all this fucking genre of writing is. It's fucking pointless. It's just, dog I mean, shit. it's pointless in a lot of ways. Not only is there no real 
uh, informational value to it because it's just one person's gut feeling from their fucking mansion. But also, no one fucking reads it anyway, except for this small group of people, just mostly like us, to get mad at it. Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. Like, we're the rubes. We're the ones who are like, oh, fuck you, Undertaker. <laughs> <laughs> this is as stupid as pro wrestling. I But no one, like... Baby, what do you Peggy mean Noonan's as stupid as pro wrestling. <laughs> I'm sorry, sir. You think, yeah, you think it's stupid to to ret to go up against a major combat force like Yokozuna <laughs> with the power with the power of sumo wrestling behind them, the training. What if, what if, fucking, what if, like Brett Stevens just killed his family with a bow flex? <laughs> 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 people, were, people were like, "What the fuck?" And then it turns out like all these, all these columnists are just like doing HGH and steroids. <laughs> and they just still look like shit. But like they're just all on Anavar cycles, and they're like, "Why?" It's just exactly like pro wrestling. Well, if the country enters the kayfabe of my world, which is what will happen when I'm elected president, you'll start seeing that. <laughs> uh, that's like, uh, that was the only way the opinion comes to get better. If you just, fo- they're like. Yeah, you can make like a quarter of a million dollars a year, but you have to just abuse steroids constantly and yeah. you have to take bumps. You have to go when you go on real time, you have to get hit with a chair. <laughs> yeah. It's like you will not live to be C60. That is a deal that you're making by being a columnist. <laughs> this is just the last thing I want to read from the uh, the Peggy Noonan piece. This is the uh, the analogy she reaches for to talk about politically divided America. We are like Chang and Ang, the 19th century Siamese twin brothers who worked for P.T. Barnum. They could not be separated. Yeah. <laughs> Can I say this is another thing, a pause, another thing I hate about opinion columnists. Whatever goddamn coffee book they're reading that <laughs> month ends up in their column. Yeah. As we all know from the PT Barnum book that I've been reading. We we are America is like that elephant that Thomas Edison <laughs> electrocuted. Uh, the smoke, the, the, truly the, we are Tesla. <laughs> the smoke is coming out of all of our giant ears. <laughs> Is is not direct current still <laughs> dominating our politics to this day? He goes, they could not be separated and went through their long lives together, married to different women, living in different houses. And then the she women says, were also twins, by the way. A few days a week in this one, a few in the other. It wasn't easy for them to walk through life together, but they did. We have to, too. And then she just goes, now I wish to switch subjects, don't you? <laughs> and she spends the rest of the top column talking about Henry Kissinger and his new book, Kissinger on Kissinger. I swear to God, I didn't make that she up. I would wrote, love. I'm going to switch subjects? Yeah. That's <laughs> unacceptable. <laughs> it's like, what, 500 words? Yeah. You should be able to have one subject. I think she should have carried out the, the circus freak analogy a, yeah. little, a little longer. Yeah. Uh, Kissinger, Kissinger sucked Kissinger. his own dick. Uh, yeah, he fucks his own looper. <laughs> awesome. Kissinger on Kissinger. Yes, I uh, was able to get down low enough that I could lick my own Metternich. Uh, according, yeah. <laughs> Metternich? Remember, yeah. Very good. Remember the Very story good. Jacob Bacharach told us? Uh, the person he fucked in a hot air balloon yes. dressed as a lobster well, dressed was him. Lobster. Yeah. Uh, a younger version of him from, from the end t- Was the back timers? Back timers. Back timers. Yeah. Back timers. Back timers. The Kissinger ultimatum. <laughs> There's all, of course there's all kinds of sequels and prequels. Yeah, uh, <laughs> the sequel comes out first. Dads and grads, sequels and prequels. <laughs> um, I he, she says America is like Chang and Ang. I think America is more like Beverly and Elliot Mantel, the twins from the film Dead Ringers. Sorry, a little little deep cut. That one's for me and me only. I, I think they're more like the Collier brothers. Yes, Just a couple of maniacs in a mansion eventually going to get crushed to death by a pile of newspaper. Well, there was there was a fire that got them and that's that fire global warming. Boom. The, the clutter carbon in our atmosphere. Boom. Got the, it. My Yo, drop. The Collier brothers got pussy. <laughs> <laughs> Who's the bluegrass band uh, brothers? The Cold play with banjos, as Kyle Kinane put it. What's that band called? Oh, Mumford and, Mumford Sons? and Sons. Sons. Mumford and We're Sons. Mumford and Sons. Our body politic clearly is closer to Mumford and in Sons. Jo- in all seriousness, than it is to the Almond I really think the most accurate thing is that we are uh, Ray Milland and Rosie Greer from The Thing with Two Heads. That's who we are. Well, uh, before we get out of here, uh, James, uh oh, we're hoping. Could we Am I maybe, in trouble? Yeah, could we maybe pitch some uh, impressions that year? Oh, sure. Why not? Do you have any? Uh, do you have any new characters, new figures you're working on? Uh, you what about, I'm, I'm, I'm ramping down. You're ramping down. Okay. I'm, I'm, as you would say in the finance industry, I'm unwinding some of these positions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. He had a long had- position on Paul Giamatti. <laughs> 
Well, never go long on Paul Giamatti. <laughs> never. Short. Yeah, yeah. I had an IPO recently. <laughs> Don't make it fun of his height. Okay, initial, it was that. an initial Paul offering. <laughs> and um, I was, uh, I, I, I said, we're going to take it public. Um, I did uh, the reverse Elon Musk. I said, we're going to take it public. Uh, $10 shares. And um, now I'm uh, severely buying everything back. <laughs> I have an idea for a character for you. What's that? All right. So his name is Monkey W. Bush. He's oh an ape who loves oil and bananas. <laughs> Bush is coming back, dude. You should, yeah. I did some movies where I was on Ronald Reagan's lap. <laughs> <laughs> Hopping around, swinging from windows. Uh-oh. Could Boom. We, uh, Million dead. <laughs> <laughs> You can if you uh if you if you play a music box, um I have little cymbals and I run around and I bang the cymbals on civilians. <laughs> it's an enhanced interrogation technique. Uh but since there's you know, uh short people, Shapiro, Giamatti, as a little throwback, could you do Paul Giamatti who believes everything Ben Shapiro does? And then <laughs> I think that the problem is then we are not adhering to traditional sex roles. <laughs> <laughs> I voluntarily committed myself to celibacy and then afterwards involuntarily have been committed to celibacy. <laughs> I've been pissed on within the confines of matrimony. <laughs> Billions is a documentary. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, Giamatti's character on Billions is a piss pig, right? Pissed on. I never, assistant. I never watched Billions. That was in his contract. That was part of the writer <laughs> <laughs> that my dom forced on me. My dom is my agent, so those are the parts that I get. <laughs> I think we should uh, wrap it up, but. Uh, James. Oh, I'm getting the light. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> no, we're uh, reaching the end here. But uh, James, uh, you have anything uh, to plug? I, I have you... a couple of things to yeah, plug go if ahead, I can. Go ahead. Go for it. I have a new podcast. Oh, Woo! now you're now, what, what was once our friend now becomes our enemy. <laughs> <laughs> yes, not the first order of business. We must meet on the field of podcasting battle. Um, is it like a? Is it like um? A uh, video game uh, battle sphere, like in the three body problem. Yeah. Okay, oh, that's a, like that. You read that book? That's oh, a, oh yes. that's a great book. Did oh, you read yes. any of the, the sequels? Yes. Uh, I haven't read the whole trilogy yet, but I really like the. Uh, They're the mind book. blowing. I um, I really like that book. Do you like having your mind blown? <laughs> I, I I absolutely do. I don't mind having my mind blown, but I look. You've got to cradle the mind ball. <laughs> I have a new podcast that's called The Underculture, and I basically do that. Okay. <laughs> um, the Underculture is a, a world of impressions and sketches and some karaoke songs. And it's on the Forever Dog Network and everywhere else that podcasts happen. And it's also on Patreon. I took a page from your guys, um, uh, your path to success. Well, that's great. Uh, we can't wait to destroy you. <laughs> we invented Patreon. We're the first people ever on there. We I've, have no, no choice but to take this as a personal insult. <laughs> Um, I immediately start attracting fire, right? Like, um, like I, like if, if you walk up to another castle in Age of Empires and they just automatically start shooting at you. <laughs> yeah. um, also, Trump versus Bernie is coming back. Ooh, we're doing uh, the first uh, redo. Um, it's like the Apocalypse Now redo. Trump versus Final Bernie, <laughs> the director's disaster. Um, Trump versus Bernie at the Creek in the Cave. Um, Saturday, May eighteenth, will be the first. Uh, the first of our um return uh version of Trump versus Bernie, me and Anthony Tamanik. But this time there'll be like a forty minute digression where you go to some like uh for French colonial house in the jungle and smoke opium with the guy's daughter. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> there, will, <laughs> there will be a whole lot more metaphor worked into a very metaphor heavy script. Thank you for the apocalypse. Now, um, yes, and. <laughs> Um, that's in New York. That's in Long Island City. Uh, this Saturday, and then we're gonna do it in July in Los Angeles and at San Diego Comic Con. Oh hell yeah! Yep, Trump versus Bernie happening, and Underculture happening. 
All right, links to uh, Trump versus Bernie and the underculture in the show description. You already know the drill, guys. Whoa. Once again, thank you very much to our good friend, James Adelmian, for stopping by the house in person. Thank you. Cheers, everybody. Bye. Bye.